Long summers in the Australian rainforest are filled with the brightest blue streams, the hottest days and the juiciest fruit. The February heat has arrived and the seasons are shifting. Wild storms roll through the night, but in the morning everything clears and the mist rises through the mountains. The waterfalls are heavy with all the rain flowing down from the valley and the fruit trees are bursting with abundance. We are sisters. Julia and Anastasia, and this is our home in the Australian rainforest. We spend our days caring for animals, growing food, creating, building, and learning to live off the land. One of the things that we've learnt in our time in nature is to celebrate the seasons. Watching each small change always puts everything into perspective. It is so hot. It's like the hottest day of the year, definitely. Maybe even the hottest day of the summer. It is ridiculous. And I'm just having a break under this tree fern right now because Maggie and Moth and all the goats just decided to run off on me when I was trying to move their paddocks, even though it's so hot and they just don't care. They just run away. I'm gonna have to follow them through the hot path with no shade and I'm so angry at them right now. Where have they even gone? I just heard Maggie's bell dingle like very far away. What are you lot doing? Where's Fern? I've decided to go this way instead and I think they're following me. Maggie, come on! Moth! Good! Hey! Oh! Hey, Moth! I just moved the goats for 15 minutes and then I had to move the sheep for like another 20 minutes and everyone's been so naughty and I'm so hot and tired. But now I have to walk to the top of the highest hill because the water tank, we've run out of water so I need to work out what's wrong. There's two ways up the hill. One is long and winding and in the sun and then the upper is so steep and I am choosing the steep one today because I cannot, I can't go in the sun. I just can't do that. And there's jambus on this way. I forgot to bring a water bottle or any sort of water. And luckily there's jambu trees along the hallway. And these are practically just water. So it's just like portable water bottle. <laughs> Yum. Hey, Safodi. You eating jambu? The tank is empty, so now I have to walk even further up the hill and change over some pipes and stuff. And I'm so hot and sweaty. Holy moly. It's ridiculous. My whole hair is just wet from sweat. Oh, lucky I found the jambus because I am refreshed after eating like five of them. <laughs> I changed over the pipes and fixed the water. Collecting our own water is hard work, but it's really beautiful to be connected to the source and understand our place here. And back down the hill, I wandered to the creek to take what must have been the most refreshing swim of my whole life. This week has been intense. We lost one of the boy ducks yesterday. Um, he went missing and we went looking for him everywhere. And then we saw a wedge tail eagle up in the sky. So we're assuming that it must have taken him. They're massive. They have like a wingspan of 
two and a half meters or something ridiculous and yeah they can even take kangaroos so it's no surprise but it's pretty upsetting and the boys are all really on edge and scared aren't you they don't even want cuddles because they must have seen it happen which is sad but now we've moved them back up to the house because they were down at the shed with us and we've moved them in with the other boys which they haven't actually met before so everyone's hanging out and all the girls are hanging out together as well we have to learn to adapt to the predators, but also to respect them. Wedgetail eagles are beautiful creatures, and these are the natural cycles of the land. Despite knowing all this, it's still so hard to lose our special little friend who always nibbled at us or waddled as fast as he could for a snack or a cuddle. In the comments, tell us about your special pets who bring you joy, or memories of the ones that have passed over the Rainbow Bridge. At this time of year, each hot day is so humid. You can feel the energy of a storm building, and I spend all day waiting for the afternoon when hopefully rain will come thundering over the hills to cool down the earth. On days like this, when the storm doesn't come, you wake up the next morning and it's even more humid. This morning routine is such a special moment of the day. I just love coming out here and saying good morning to each of the animals and just waking up slowly and feeling the sun on my face. Hey Maggie! It feels like there's big rain coming today but for now the sun's out and it just feels really beautiful to be out here.
<laughs> we made this batch of kraut a couple of weeks ago and it has turned out so good. It's the yummiest thing. So today I think we're going to go and pick some more green pawpaws and we're going to make a whole new batch. It's so humid outside, so I'm just staying in here and doing a few things for a bit. I made this painting a few weeks ago, and it's based off this really special afternoon when Anastasia had just made this dress for herself out of an old Duna cover. And just when she tried it on, this rainbow appeared over the hill, and it was so special. And lots of people have been helping me decide whether I should include the rainbow in the painting or not. But what I'm thinking is, I can always add it later, and one of the things I've learned from painting is that everything's transient and nothing's permanent. And the fact that everything's always shifting is part of the beauty of it. So I'm just gonna put an isolation coat over it for now and hang it up somewhere. Hey, sweetie. You helping? No, Clover. The humidity finally broke and it's pouring rain. This is our neighbor's dog, Franca, who came from the same litter as Clover. They are the sweetest siblings and love going on walks and plays together. This summer has been so wet, which means that most of the mangoes got knocked off the tree, but there are still some that got through. So before more rain comes or any fruit bats get them, me and mum are harvesting them all. There are over 50 mango trees and so many different varieties of mangoes on the farm. But this year, there are only stringy and bowen mangoes from the top of the highest hill. There must have been enough wind up here to keep them a bit drier through the monsoon. Mango picking always brings back the best childhood memories of summers spent collecting mangoes across the farm. We were constantly covered in sticky mango juice or spending days preserving mango chutney from an abundant harvest that lasted the next five years.
We're going to ferment some papayas with some other fruit and veggies that are in season. When we make ferments, we always come and hang out in mum's house and process everything as a team. It's much easier with the three of us and we love these days of cooking and preserving together. We are going to preserve all these green papayas and jumbos today. I'm really excited because our last ferment turned out so well and we've been eating it every single day. And it just feels so good to preserve and ferment what's in season and abundant at the time. And just keep eating it for months and months afterwards. Blue stringy mangoes, we never actually cut them. We just peel off the skin and eat them and let all the juice run down our arms. It's a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> The music in this video is by Ruby Rogers, who lives in Brisbane, the closest city to us. She is incredible and produces all of her music from her school computer. We can only imagine how far she'll go. You can find her links in our description. Thanks so much for joining us. Please subscribe. And we are so grateful to every person who supports us on Patreon. Your support and the special community that we have means so much to us.